just distributing the syllabus of political science paper 1 paper 2 and general studies 1 2 3 4 okay the reason is we will be <coughs> seeing what are the areas which is overlapping between political science and general studies later okay second part so what we are going to today to today is to orient yourself to, towards political science what is this optional is about what are the positives of okay, the myths that is there in this option and i'm going to falsify those myths myths as we do in political science no js mill would say uh, for every fake or wrong uh, pro propaganda it is to be countered by truth okay or uh, in uh, freedom of speech and expression the main problem that we have is that fake news currently we have fake news do we have a solution in political science for that yes js mill has spoke about you have in order to counter something which is false you have to speak about truth only then you can validate the truth and invalidate the fake news false propaganda okay so the myths about uh, political science i'm going to talk about and boost all those myths and then uh, we will be talking about some you know it won't be pure demo but some interesting in the beginning itself in interesting aspects that you will be coming across in political science to get the feel of the subject how the subject will be okay uh, then we will be seeing the overlapping okay portions so that the benefits of uh, taking uh, political science as an option then uh, the class methodology how we are going to do how to approach the study of thinkers thinkers no when you are studying how you have to approach it uh, uh what will be the class approach okay how i'm going to deal with the class the test methodology how the test will be conducted when it will be conducted okay so that kind of orientation will be given to you okay and uh, first point that i have to mention is this is the first time we are going for uh, offline classes as well as tests of course pre corona it was there after that now only we are doing it exclusively we will be doing it every week it will be there okay the tentatively the date that has been fixed is uh, 14th of august or 13th okay fine so i'll tell you meanwhile what you should be doing okay and you should you can be contacting me through mail and all you know, so that i will be engaging you through this one month process so you come up with a good foundation okay um to introduce myself for those who are not there in the morning session i am satya paul deepak i did my bsc physics at loyola college and then uh, i got placed in cognizant infosys and google and chose to work at cognizant worked there one and a half years after that resigned and uh, uh, in order to prepare for civil service examination my options were political science and sociology and uh, so uh, yeah geography for prelims first prelims i took for prelims also you have to take an option i should have taken the same option for the prelims and uh, mains but uh, over confidence okay so but it helped me in uh, you know gaining wide knowledge uh, so when you read multiple subjects you know the interlinking of it will help you to gain a lot of knowledge which is helping in me uh, as a tutor or a trainer for civil service examination i've gone for five inter interviews five consecutive interviews uh, political science has always been one of the reason why i reached the interview stage okay unfortunately i did not clear I'll, as you told in the morning I'll, i the reason, there are certain reasons and i'll be revealing it to you you like optional students are somewhat so closely related i'll know you by names so automatically the informal interactions i will be telling you what not to do and uh, guide you in the process of uh, preparation of civil services okay so this is my introduction and uh, uh, in trivandrum i have been conducting mains test series for political science already okay except for the last two years uh, from 2017 uh, so three consecutive i have done uh, john d kotho uh, from trivandrum he cleared in first attempt he took political science main series main series with me he was from other institute of course but may exclusively me and he i think in google review of uh, trivandrum branch he has given his uh, review mentioning my name okay uh, for giving him a special attention he used to call me uh, and i give person a uh, personal attention to him apart from preparation some materials which is not there for political science that that is one person i can claim sir and there are other people like agnathletes and others as a team we guided them 
uh, in Chennai five exclusive. I'm just claiming people to whom you can make a call. They'll say this because of Satyapal sir, we cleared. So totally six people, one here, five in. Uh, because I did not take options there. I took options only in Bangalore, only one batch. Okay, in this Jishnu is one of my student. Uh, only main steel steel. From that, you know these people uh, now. Uh, two people have cleared mains and go, going to take up mains who, who, uh, whom I'm guiding, uh, Bangalore branch, Rahul and Anshu, and uh, uh, Dhaneshwar from 2017 batch. He is also taking up mains. Last time they took, now also they are taking. Political science, good marks. Even the, they are taking a mark more than the, uh, uh, you know, the average score of uh, those who cleared, final list. Okay, they have not cleared because of essay or some other paper. I'm guiding them now also, so you can expect a result this time. Um, so I just wanted to tell these people, you know, whom you can claim, uh, I can claim exclusively that I personally guided. You call them, and uh, I think somebody is from Castle Board, you know, the yeah, Ilakya, I think you should be knowing, you no know, sub collector. Okay, yeah, she uh, is uh, under my guidance only. She is sociology option, but general studies uh, mains paper I corrected, evaluated, and a special attention was given, and she cleared. Okay, so these people now. Uh, before going to talk about the benefits of political science, myths, and other things, I just want to uh, find out how interested are you in the subject. So firstly, I would like to ask certain questions. The main problem in administration is corruption, right? Yeah. What is corruption? Can anybody define? Just try your own, because all of us know what is corruption. Yes. One who takes bribe or uses government money is corruption. Yes. OK. So when you're so much interested in your self-interest, Compromising the interests of the people you are working for. Okay, right. Okay, that's more comprehensive. Not only money, when you use your official office for your own use at the cost of public use is what we call this. And then there will be an, another form of corruption that is um, when the state's direction is one. Overall, the community has one idea but you impose your own idea over them. That is also corruption. It's not only monetary, it is not only promotion of self-interest, it is also promotion of one's own thinking over the public thinking. Okay, defined by Machiavelli, not me. Machiavelli, in, in political science, you will learn this comprehensively. A lay person will think that corruption is just money alone, but corruption is when you impose your own self-interest ideas and uh, you know wishes over the wishes of the common is what we call it as corruption i'll teach you casually listen you know now why corruption is taking place any idea you can give your own opinion like just be relaxed see political science is a subject which is being created by discourse not dictation so I'm not going to dictate in the class. We are going to have a discussion, discourse, where I will give an opinion. You will counter that opinion. Then we will evolve an opinion with the guidance of the political thinkers. What they have said, with that we will be doing. So tell me what may be the reason for corruption. Yes. Selfishness. Okay, once, once, one, why one person want to become rich? Why a person wants money? Buy things for themselves and family. Okay, family. Okay, fine. So Plato has offered a solution. He said that a person who is coming to rule the country should not have family, and they cannot own property. Only when you say allow them to, you know, you can earn as much as property, you will go into corruption and, you know, go, go for unproportional income uh, or disproportional income, which is not fitting for your income. Okay. So, and family is the main reason why you are corrupt. So many a time, uh, 
99 percent of the IAS, IPS officers, when they get selected into the services, they are non-corrupt. That is why they score good marks in interview. And what makes them to be become corrupt is because of family. Even if you are not corrupt, yeah. okay, boys, no, uh, the wife will say, "What is the use of you being an IAS? Okay, no use like that." If it is a husband, he will also say, "I married you thinking that you will be bringing in lot of Lakshmi." Uh, to the house, but now you are not doing anything. You are not using the power. So there is misuse of power and corruption. Plato says so. Uh, one who comes to state, the ruling class should not have family and property. Solution. Then Kautilya, he also explains the reason for corruption. Indian thinker, Artha Shastra, mentioning. He says that suppose there is a fish in a tank. You don't know how much water it has consumed. Right, like that, a bureaucrat, a person who's in the ruling class, is inside the administration. You cannot correctly assess how much money that has been taken, how much power has been misused. So corruption is a reality. But at the same time, he offers solution. What is the solution he is offering? Point one: heavy punishment, capital punishment for corrupt officials. Second, he is not only talking about capital punishment. He says that reward. Those people who are revealing the corrupt offices, whistleblowers. We are thinking that whistleblowers are somebody uh, who's talked about in the recent times. No, Kautilya has talked about it. Okay, one who are revealing the information, they should be uh, uh, rewarded. Honest offices must be publicized and honored. Okay, giving awards. You know, placing them for the public, telling them they have done the best thing. So when you honor them, automatically it incentivizes other officers to be honest. Paying of penalty, okay, confiscation of property, okay, disproportionate to the corruption they did, confiscate everything, okay. And uh, now to prevent corruption, he talks about you know a particular method of recruiting officials. As well as training these officials. Okay, he'll be telling you know you must be recruiting people from the same class. As you know, in India we have a caste-based society where there is stratification. Each caste will be performing a particular action. One of the positive thing about this, it's negative only. This modern generation we are criticizing caste system. I'm not going against it. But one of the positive thing about the same caste doing the same work is they will maintain their ethics. Have you seen this Bahubali film? Bahubali. I should ask who didn't watch that film. Just know you didn't watch. Please raise your hand. No, be interactive. I'm not going to ask any question. Those who didn't watch, raise your hand. Which means all of you have watched, right? There, there. Yeah, you didn't watch. Full move. They will be talking about ethics of each class. Okay, so if you are a uh, if you are a warrior class, you have to obey the orders of the king. Okay, if you are a spouse of the king, if you are a bride or bridegroom of a particular kingdom, you should follow the ethics. It they, the, throughout the film, this ethical aspect will follow. Even in the climax, there will be one scene where uh, the Katapa is the closest person, uh, uncle of uh, the king, prince. He he will kill the king. Why? It is because it is order that has come from the godmother. Ethics, okay, to follow the requirement, okay. So, uh, what I am trying to say is, with respect to Kautilya, he says that if you recruit from a certain class, you will ensure that they are remaining loyal and non-corrupt, because the generation after generation they are tra you know, trained in ethics. See, these are multiple perspectives. We have to see all these multiple perspectives according to the modern times. We have to list out. Uh, what are the things that should be done to do away with corruption? Okay, fine. Now, uh, which class do you think is best to rule? Middle class or uh, rich people or poor people? Who is best to rule a country according to your uh, opinion? Make a guess if you don't know. Now think an answer. Who will do the best rule? Yes. If you are wrong also, no matter, I told you, only when you discuss, you make a lot of mistakes, your 
thinking process will enhance and you will be able to form a lot of opinion which is first for political science option yes middle class okay very good any other answers open up yes, you have something to say sorry middle class why middle class because you are all from middle class maybe that is one of the reason most of them are from middle class that may be a reality today okay sorry why he has given a reason you also give a reason okay i'm asking you know uh, uh, people who come to power they should be from which class yeah so supposing ias ips hmm? that doesn't matter okay in case if i ask you who will better suit into that role non corrupt a person uh, you know anonymous who is willing to serve the society without uh, uh, thinking about gain who is politically neutral who uh, will abide by ethics of civil services probity will be there integrity will be there all the role of civil services is there no yes probably rich person okay aristotle gives a solution he he says that middle class median he talk, he uses the word golden mean the rich will be careless okay careless of the law or they will be arrogant of the law you put any rule they will not follow whereas the poor will be ignorant of law as you know we have discussed this no poor is will be ignorant of law while the middle class will be abideful of law so the middle class here we are not talking about caste here we are talking about class because aristotle's society is class based society so he says that the golden mean now rule by elite or rule by poor okay or i would say the two terms is using one is oligarchy another is democracy democracy is ruled by many ruled by the people like india okay oligarchy is a powerful few a few people are will be ruling the uh, society okay so what is best form do you think so the society be ruled by few or by the people by the people of course because you are in india so you see say this but there is a problem when uh, democracy is ruled by the people things will happen as it is uh, happened in maharashtra karnataka uh, right now during congress time in 1970s lot of state governments was taken away is it democracy so democracy always goes by the number that is the problem right and people always does not know what is good to them okay uh, for example in sri lanka okay uh people come and you know they burn houses okay is something is going to happen because of burning the houses of politicians nothing okay so democracy is equal to mobocracy according to plato so aristotle comes and say there should be golden mean he uses the word polity polity from there only we are using the word polity indian polity us polity like that polity is a mix of oligarchy and democracy in india we have democracy because we have elected politicians but at the same time we have educated ias officers guiding them and we have dynastic politics also in india this is a kind of oligarchy we have people from a particular group is coming of course democracy opens up but the mixture of oligarchy and democracy gives a sustainable political system according to aristotle see here we have to talk in political science we should not opinionate i have opinion i my system is saying aristotle is saying this and then in conclusion in answers you have to say which is best from whether what is it is correct or not modern times how democracy as said by aristotle will be a problem but there are measures that you can take to ensure this democracy is working properly by introducing certain institutions and policies that you can mention as an answer okay yeah that is your comment very good that is your comment part in uh, in in uh, political science paper the first five questions mandatory of uh, question number 1 in section a and question number 5 in section b they use the word comment uh, especially the uh, not in section b the uh, section a uh, question 1 five questions comment which means you have to write what aristotle has said and then opinionate on it give your opinion that freedom is there in political science whereas other uh, subjects no the scope for commenting is will be very less 
you have to tell what the thinkers have said and then you have to talk about what is your opinion with comparing to the present systems you that's good very good okay now uh, what should be the character of a the head of the state one who is ruling the country whether it is a king or is a prime minister okay how come what what should be the nature of a person whether he should be uh, honest moral or can he be immoral can be immoral at times machiavelli says this and he says that don't apply the morality of common people to the morality of king king can king is we should not say uh, immoral we should exactly use the word that is non moral is actions of morality has to be decided in the interest of the state if he did something and it is in the best interest of the state then that is moral and uh, on beautiful word is there what machiavelli says the king must be lion and fox lion in the sense of courageousness fox in the sense that in order to counter the enemies in order to counter the opposite state you must be cunning can a king uh, create trouble in neighboring country kautilya uh, says yes machiavelli says yes both are comparable both says yes if your country has to be fine you have to create trouble in the neighboring country keep it weak use espionage system and uh, kautilya talks about eight types of espionage system eight types of people who best suits to be a spies and how they can be used in order to control the internal security for that matter also protecting the borders okay so gs internal security department all you will get lot of inputs from here okay so what are the strategies the carrot and stick policy and all is spoken by both machiavelli as well as uh, kautilya okay now when we come to uh, these three thinkers english liberal thinkers they will say thomas hobbes locke and mills you know these thinkers which i am mentioning they are in our syllabus that is why i am talking about them what is their contribution because traditionally people have thought kings has to be all powerful citizens are subjects they should not open their mouth before the king but these english rebels are coming and saying that individuals are having rights they are having rights they talk about natural rights artificial rights and all we will speak about the later they have rights thomas hobbes talks about right to self preservation you have to protect yourself so you should be in a country then locke comes and says that you have life liberty and right to property is introducing three rights traditionally they say we should have a country that country should protect us we should have a powerful king next generation of thinkers are coming yes there should be powerful country but there must be limitation of power there must be rights like that but when you talk about rights english thinkers they were talking about rights of rights of mercantile class alone traders alone they were not talking about rights of the common people they were talking about the rights of the traders free trade like that they have been talking right to property right to liberty they were not talking about the rights of workers they were not talking the rights of poor this is where karl marx is coming is coming and countering english philosophers and the earlier philosophers saying state is an instrument of oppression see how it is evolving no the concept of state the modern state has evolved through these thinkers that is why these thinkers are in self the theory behind why the state would have come how it evolved is what we are going to read it karl marx comes and opposes it <coughs> tell tells that state is an instrument of oppression it is working for the capitalist class rich people only he spoke for the liberation of workers he spoke for a communist state where workers will be the state <clears throat> or i should be very clear he wanted a socialist state where workers are rulers then these rulers as well as workers will dismantle the state and distribute the property to the community right to property is not now but the individual right to property is of the community he dreamed it but only socialist state was possible okay then uh, since karl marx failed in the sense his analysis was correct about the society the problems of the society he was uh, able to explain why rich becomes richer poor becomes poor these and all you listen in your everyday newspapers these will come this all these ideas are taken from the thinkers who you are going to read in political science in detail i am giving you a glimpse of them after that you know karl karl marx gramsci is coming and explaining 
Antonio Gramsci is also in our syllabus. Gramsci is telling that Karl Marx failed because he did not understand the sociological influence of ideology and other things in sustaining the system. He is introducing a term called as hegemony. 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 He is introducing a concept called as hegemony, which means with ideas how you are controlling. The common people are exploited, but they will not know their exploit. You go to a shop, a particular product, actual selling price will be 100 rupees. They will display 150 rupees and slash to 50 and then you put, we are selling it for 100. Common man is being cheated, but he'll go happily feel that he's in a comfort position. This is one lay example for how hegemony works. You are exploited, but you will be not aware of your exploitation. <coughs> <coughs> you will think everything is working for your interest. Simple. The workers accept the exploitation of the rich because workers think their interest is in the interest of their owner. If owner is happy, owner is earning money, I will be also happy. He will give me salary, he will take care of me, so I will be happy. So they are not uh, interested. So Antony Gramsci is coming and saying that first you have to spread the ideology of socialism. Make people understand that they are being exploited. Then you have to establish a socialist state communist state, then only it will be feasible. So he's offering solution for Marx. So after Marx, you will be studying Gramsci. Got it? The failure of a failure of Marx is explained by neo-Marxist Gramsci. And he says that it is because of ideas, people do not understand they are exploited. They are agreeing. Now you have to make a propaganda. Then comes Anna Arendt, okay? She is against all kind of existing systems. She says that you have evolved a system in which you have separated politics from people. At the beginning, in Greece, in Athens, what was the system? All people will take part in the decision making process, participatory democracy, direct democracy. In uh, India, also, sabhas and samitis. Okay. The Republican form of government of Buddha. Once, once again, Buddhist thought you will be reading in uh, our uh, political thinking and political science, ancient Indian thought. The Buddhist thought talks about the election system. They talk about sabhas and samitis. They talk about how people, even now, Tibetan form of Buddhism, elect their leader in a democratic way. That comes from Buddhist thought. So, both Western world, Greece, the ideological capital of Western political thought. From Greece only everything spread, right? And India, let's leave Arab and Chinese, other civilizations. Let's compare these two, Western and India. We also started with direct democracy. Okay, even in case of Tamil literature, you know, for your information, and they talked about uh, councils where, and there is a separate system, which is the main question also, Kudavali system, wherein they will elect through a democratic process. Okay, so we started as a direct democracy and uh, slowly we started separating, telling that guarding the country and ruling the country is of a separate class. They only from starting from Plato, Plato started this. So it culminated till Karl Marx and as well as, you know, Gramsci is also once again establishment of state. Once again, they are saying workers only should rule. They are saying it is a job allocated to a particular group in the society. In other words, it is called as division of labor. Anarand is saying, no, we should go back. Human beings are political. So everybody should take part. When you allow a group of people to uh, manage the country, they will exploit the poor, they will exploit the working class, there will be a problem. Even if workers come, you know, they will be exploiting other groups, other vulnerable groups. She is a Jew, okay, who went all kind of exploitation and uh, this anti-Semitism, you know, uh, like opposed to Jews, this kind of thing during Hitler. She was under the Hitler regime. So she, seeing Hitler and Stalin, she denied Nazism, she denied socialism, communism. She thought both are totalitarian regimes. Both are, you know, completely controlling people. People are being exploited. So she said we should go back to direct democracy. What kind of direct democracy? Let us speak in the class. 
because her concept is quite uh, uh, complex to be explained in very short but it's very very beautiful you have to know from the beginning greece athens plato aristotle till karl marx what they said and what uh, hitler did what nazism did then only you can easily understand anna arendt she is very easy to understand but entire internet all those things they have been explained i have made it easier for you okay so in political science okay so this is how things will go okay is it is about theory of how we organize ourselves as a community how we organize as a country and rule ourselves what is the systems that is available various systems why those systems came which system is suitable when do you think democracy is always good no machiavelli talks about it a crisis ridden society should have uh, i was talking to you morning crisis ridden society should have a strong leader a cunning leader whereas a smooth society should have a republican form of government representative form of government wherein common man should be able to access the high levels and every decision should be taken in a democratic way okay there are things like this okay so we will be studying about theories we will be studying about what is power its theories various perspectives of power okay various perspectives of hegemony equality right now we may think equality means economic equality not like that equality differs from thinker to thinker aristotle justifies slavery in the name of equality surprising and uh, aristotle talks about differential treatment of people with different caliber the best of the society should be honored and rewarded more and those who are less contributing to society should be rewarded less so equality is not that you know there is there they are talking about perfect equality and there are dimensions of equality so i'm just talking the syllabus diamond we are going to study the dimensions of equality meaning political economical social cultural okay we are not talking about one time dimensional multiple dimensions and the conflict between these ideas and we always think no when we study preamble liber liberty equality justice dignity all these concepts are interrelated that is how i take class polity class but in political science there is a contradiction between these points also we will be seeing the other side that is the interesting aspect okay we ju just don't uh, read what constitution says beyond that conflict between equality and liberty conflict between dignity and justice conflict between liberty and justice then there is procedural justice substantial justice okay sometimes some people when they are mentioning they'll be talking about procedural justice substantial you may be asking sir what is this wait for the class okay so human mind no when it speaks it speaks with a narrative with a dimension with their own past experiences with their ideological religious caste background some other person interacts this nuances is you will understand only when you read political science okay what exactly is equality okay and uh, you will be reading about gandhism normally we think gandhi is the person who got freedom his philosophy the part we forget okay uh, as an indian all of us must read the philosophy of gandhi which is truly ideal very ideal and very beautifully drafted okay and it is you know uh, very path breaking also in fact his idea of power is called as constructive view of power because it is used by people uh generally you may think that gandhi always has to abide by law right but in some instances he has said civil disobedience he has said that if a law is unjust law you should not obey and what is power power is when people come together against those who are abusing them through law power is not holding law and implementing law it is when there is abuse of law people as far as freedom struggle you will be linking it okay 
So you'll be learning about Gandhi, Ambedkar, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan. Okay, uh, uh, the uh, person, uh, Yemen Roy, okay, who is actually a one who is an influencer of Indian constitution. Okay, there is a passing by reference of Yemen Roy and Lakshmi Khan. Who is, who is he? What he, he suggested? Okay, in fact, in Mexico, Communist Party was started by an Indian. That is Yemen Roy. And uh, uh, equal to Lenin and Stalin, there was one person who was highly influential of the communist international, called as Comitant, international communist uh, uh, grouping, which is Emin Roy. Emin Roy had differences with Stalin, so he came out. Okay, so that is a different story. But he was influential, highly powerful. He was in Politburo. Politburo is a highly influential body. He was there in that. Okay. So you'll be talking about M and Roy. Then uh, section B completely are going to talk about Indian polity, both constitution and actual functioning of the constitution and sociological aspects of our constitution, caste, religion, uh, you know, actual working of uh, political parties like that and you know, social movements, okay, like uh, peasant movement, workers movement, okay, uh, environmental movements. These are the things you are going to study in the section B. Okay. And uh, paper two, you are going to talk about comparative politics. You are going to compare the societies, developed and developing society. Here, you are going to compare how the state is, government is, how social, uh, uh, the, the civil society is, like NGOs, other people, how they are working, party system, how it is differing. So you are going to compare developed and developing countries in general. And then you are going to talk about globalization. What is the meaning of globalization? What is its response? Then we are going to study about international economic system, United Nations, okay, in the first part, and the contemporary issues, contemporary concerns that is there. Okay, so these are the important areas we are going to cover. In section B of paper two, we are completely going to cover foreign policy and current affairs. There they would have, it may appear a static, Whatever you read in newspaper, morning I said no newspaper reading, it is very useful for political science. It, it has actually cuts down our time because whatever you read in paper, apply the theory, you know the technical terms, apply it, and then you can uh, write good answers, get good marks. Okay, fine. So I've just given you overall orientation. So this is how po po uh, political science classes will go, lectures will go going on. And uh, we will be, uh, discussing in detail about each thinker and each uh, concepts in detail. Okay, so I just opened for writing the spelling hegemony. But anyway, we will later see when we come to Gramsci. So this is the next, why political science and international relations? You have your, uh, this thing, no? I will just tell you the topics which is overlapping. So take your pen. Take both syllabus that has been distributed to you, GS syllabus, as well as the uh, political science syllabus. What we are going to do is compare and see, okay, where, which are the areas is overlapping between the two subjects. Has anybody done that already? No, right? Okay, so now this will be an exercise which will help you to decide on or uh, be confident that you know your choice is good. Okay. Now, um, General studies paper one, general studies one, the second topic, modern Indian history from about the middle of 18th century until the present significant events, personalities issues. So you can underline that, that topic, the second part of the topic. You can number it as one. Why not to compare? Okay. Now take political science uh, syllabus, section B of paper one, Indian government and politics. Indian government and politics. Yeah. In that first A, one A, political strategies of India's freedom struggle. Underline constitution to mass satyagraha, non cooperation, civil disobedience, militant and revolutionary movements, peasant and workers' movements. You read this in political science, GS that is covered. 60% of GS is covered. That area is covered. And you will be reading it with. Various perspectives also. So your answers will be sharp there. 
only thing is you will not mention the who which perspective whether it's marxist perspective whether it's liberal perspective whether it is feminist perspective whether it is a perspective of indian or a western the cambridge school you will not mention the perspective but that ideas you can write there in a layman terms okay then uh, take the gs syllabus 1 2 3 4 5 fifth point which starts the history of the world in that paragraph come to the last sentence which talks about political philosophies like communism capitalism socialism underline that and mention it as two mention as two topic number two now take the uh, this one gs syllabus sorry political science syllabus in that section b indian government and politics this is, sorry wait yeah uh, in that paper 1 8 topic number 8 underline liberalism socialism marxism 8 paper 1 paper 1 of political science and international relation 8 political ideologies liberalism socialism marxism 2 same as what gs yes, mark here also too so you can relate okay then take the gs paper general studies paper 1 next to this capitalism socialism you have salient features of indian society diversity of india that is not reflected in political science but next one role of women and women's organization underline that and put number 3 okay then come to yeah section b indian government and politics point number 11 point number 11 women's movement is there no there human rights movement women's movement and the environmental movement is there so underline women's movement so same right political science and here common if you read in political science elaborately you can handle this topic you can skip that when it comes to gs see you read political science option fully and then adjust it with gs don't do the reverse many of you who choose political science you think that what you read in gs you can apply here don't do that what you read here write there in simple terms without using thinkers name without using strong terminologies used in political science in layman terms write the answers there but it's overlapping it reduces your time okay next yeah uh, after that effects of globalization on indian society point number 4 that is in general studies paper 1 okay after role of women and women's organization next uh, point effects of globalization of indian society underline in gs paper 1 general studies paper 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 8 eight, eight, eight point it's in a dot okay it is used effects of globalization on indian society that is point number 4 okay mark it as point number 4 take political science syllabus paper 2 paper 2 fourth topic globalization responses from developed and developing societies responses from developed and developing societies so when you uh, read the responses of developed and developing societies first you will read the effect and then only response okay comprehensively when you read it in political sense you can cover that area also okay single place you are learning you are completing that area okay so in in the that topic globalization put four okay then that then come to gs paper next uh, topic after effects of globalization communalism and secularism round that and put point number 5 communalism and secularism put point number 5 come to political science syllabus yeah paper 2 sorry paper 1 section b paper 1 section b point number uh, that is topic number 9 in the second page topic number 9 religion in indian politics they would have mentioned caste religion ethnicity in indian politics religion in indian politics no round that religion the word religion round that put number 5 which is nothing but it talks about communalism and secularism so when we read comprehensively religious effect communalism and secularism in different dimensions in political science we will be able to address that there also both talks about communalism in india and secularism in india okay fine next uh now general studies no paper 3 or general studies paper 2 general studies paper 2 governance constitution polity is there no there first topic underline indian constitution historical underpinnings evolution 
Yeah, if you underlined, put point number six. Indian Constitution, historical underpinnings, evolution. Put point number six. Come to paper one of political science syllabus, section B, topic number two, making of Indian Constitution, legacies of the British rule. Right? Underline making of Indian Constitution, legacies of British rule. Point six, which means both topics are same. Why we are giving numbers to check you know, which topic is overlapping? So when we are preparing. it can be easy for you okay to avoid repetition then uh, you take gs paper same after indian constitution historical underpinnings and evolution the first topic of uh, pa- uh, general studies paper 2 features amendments significant provisions and basic structure underline for same first topic after point 6 underline it separately and put point number 7 okay then come to paper 1 section b topic number 3 which talks about salient features of indian constitution there they have just mentioned features here they have given the detail what are the features of indian constitution what are they preamble fundamental rights firm duties directive principles parliamentary system amendment procedure judicial review basic structure dot right same topic they have given elaborately here okay so when you read this uh, point number 3 of uh, indian polity in uh, our class will be there complete there then eight uh, put point number 8 in the second point of general studies paper 2 functions and responsibilities of union and states underline that point and uh, last but uh, one word before challenges there in you know, last two words challenges there in underline that double underline the same paragraph last line La, sorry last two words challenges therein okay so this is point number 8 come to political science paper paper 1 section b principal organs of the union government underline that emphasized role and actual working underline actual working so challenges the other phrase you know there is actual working see in in between if you miss please raise your voice tell that sir repeat i, I am willing to repeat please underline we will avoid the repetition yeah fine so take the gs paper paper 2 okay leave the third and fourth topic fifth topic parliament and state legislature structure functioning conduct of their business powers and privileges and issues arising arising out of these put point number 9 put point number 9 now, now come to political science paper paper 1 section b uh, where you put point number 8 the next one is point number 9 underline no principal organs of the state government principal organs of the state government okay then uh, this both uh, uh, fourth and fifth point no they also include the next point in gs paper i I'll, i'll tell from first take gs paper the next topic structure organization and functioning of the executive and judiciary underline that structure organization function of executive and judiciary point number 10 come here okay both a and b okay of section b topic number 4 political science paper paper 1 section b point number 4 into a and b in both the strength point will come it talks about judiciary there they have given it in a clubbed manner here they have separated in a different manner otherwise this point 4 is same so okay fine next statutory bodies that is one next page no turn the next page third point third uh, topic statutory bodies only underline statutory because in political science syllabus we talk about statutory bodies only okay regulatory and quasi judicial is the gs part they won't ask question in the political science so underline only statutory now take the political science paper uh, syllabus okay there we have point number 6 underline that statutory institutions and commissions okay uh, before the statutory body you no know, in gs paper take gs paper in fact this uh, along with statutory you can underline the about topic also appointment to various constitutional courts and powers 
function and responsibilities of various constitutional bodies underline that that particular point we have it in political science also election commission and various other commissions all are following now then after the statutory you know that you explain next topic government policies and intervention leave it next next topic development process leave it welfare schemes you no know, in that paragraph the last line last sentence third sentence body is constituted for protection and betterment of vulnerable sections underline that body is constituted for protection and betterment of vulnerable sections okay take uh, political science paper okay in that you know the same after uh, this uh, election commission finance commission there is national commission for scheduled caste scheduled tribes national commission for women national human rights commission national commission for minorities national backward class commission underline that okay so which is same as the institutions there they are talking about institutions for the welfare of marginalized people they have given in detail political science is if you read all these things comprehensively here in political science that area can be skipped in general studies okay okay next is uh, issues relating to development management of social sector in gs leave it issues related to poverty and hunger leave it important aspects of government leave it role of civil services leave it india and its neighborhood relations underline india and its neighborhood relations underline put point number 13 put point number 13 and come to paper 2 section b topic 3 paper number 2 section b india and the world topic 3 India in the world will be bold. Topic three, not there. Topic three, A, B, C, D, all four. Yeah, all four. Underline all four and put point number thirteen. This is nothing but India and its neighbor. India and South Asia and India's neighbor. The word is different, but India and South Asia is nothing but India and its neighbor. Okay, you will learn it comprehensively together. Okay, this one. Uh, they are not concentrating on bilateral relation, but issues. They are bilateral relations. Anyway, it is interrelated. You read India and South Asia first, and then we prepare for bilateral relation to be holistic. We handle both areas. Okay. Next, take uh, GS paper. Bilateral, regional, and global groupings. Okay. Underline that bilateral, regional, and global groupings. Come to paper two, point number ten, topic number ten, regionalization of world politics. U, EU, ASEAN, APEC, NAFTA, and SARC. Then uh, United Nations. That is also a global organization, no? Global level organization. Point number nine. That also underlined. In uh, India and the world. Point uh, topic number six. India and the UN system. Role in UN peacekeeping. Demand for permanent seat in Security Council. Underline that. So this is the concern that we have in UN. Questions will be there in political science as well as there. Yes, yes. Last point is, uh, I, I told in India and the world, there is a topic called as India and the UN system. Point number six. Underline that. Role in UN peacekeeping. Demand for permanent seat in Security Council, which is uh, uh, related to the. Bilateral, regional, and global groupings. That point. Okay. Now in GS uh, paper, next to that bilateral, regional, global groupings, leave the next uh, topic: effect of policies in politics. Next is important international institutions, agencies, four on their structure and mandate. UN will come. Okay. Here it is elaborate. UN, if you learn there, UN part is over here. But other institutions like ILO, WHO, and all in general studies paper you have to study, which is not there in. Political science, okay. So UN system alone, if you read there, in this point, important international uh, institutions, UN part you can skip here, and other institutions alone study. You mark that, ex except for UN, other things should be studied for GS. So UN you will be studying elaborately, other institutions moderately to manage the questions asked in GS paper, okay. UN in detail, other institutions in moderate. Mark that, note that there itself. Okay.
then next paper 4 related to planning related to planning that is first topic indian economy and issues related to planning no underline that come to political science paper 1 section b paper 1 b eighth topic planning and economic development underline okay so here put point number 17 there also in gs paper also put point number 17 related to planning then uh, in uh, general studies paper 3 1 2 3 4 5 6 7th point 7th point land reforms in india land reforms in india land reforms in india once again if you come to political science paper paper 1 section b political science paper 1 section b same 8 8 paper 1 section b 8 after this in the in the topic planning and development you will see that land reforms and agrarian relation point is there underline Okay, so if you learn it in political science, there you'll be fine. Liberalization and economic, economic reforms, the next point also underlined. Same paper one of political science paper, section B, eighth topic, liberalization and economic reforms, underlined. Okay. So in GS paper, uh, if you see after land reforms, GS paper, three, after land reforms in India, you will find effect of liberalization on economy. Changes in industrial policy and their effects on industrial growth. So you can underline that. So holistically, if you read in political science, here it will be. The slightest difference is, listen, listen. Political science, you will be so much focused on polity aspect. General studies, you will focus on polity, economy, social, cultural, all aspects. Different dimension. There you will give utmost priority to its impact on polity. Liberalization of uh, economy and its impact on polity. Okay. So liberalization, no, it is uh, uh, brought in the Madhavis committees to the core, their involvement in politics, coalition governments like that. I'll teach, I'll teach, don't worry. Okay. So these overlapping topics, how to differentiate between GS paper and political science paper, what terms to be used, what not, I will explain in the specific topic when we are dealing with it. Okay, that is how the classes will go. Okay, next is, uh, yeah, then in ethics paper, Uh, last but third paragraph. Not last but one, two, three, fourth one. Last but fourth one. Contribution of moral and uh, moral thinkers and philosophers from India and the world. Contribution of moral and moral thinkers and philosophers from India and the world. So most of these thinkers are also been extra few thinkers only. Already you will be studying 17 thinkers. So few more you study, like Immanuel Kant, uh, Hegel, uh, Heidegger, like that, uh, Habermas, some few people are there, T.H. Green, like that. I will cover those also in political science, okay, because their thought is useful to criticize the 17 thinkers. So that area you can very well skip. It is a very large area. For other optional students, they are going to difficult. With this knowledge of political science, you are going to write best answers in uh, uh, Political science and international relations. First time when they introduced ethics in 2013. Okay, so we didn't know newly introduced syllabus. There was no material, nothing. Even the professors didn't know what to teach for ethics. Okay, faculties because that's new. We don't know what will be asked. Okay, so we just uh, saw the meaning for these words and went. I scored 132 in ethics paper. I entirely tell that it is because I studied. PSI and sociology, of course. Sociology are, are the additional six thinkers. And the prelims geography, geographical thought. Okay, so uh, this Humboldt, okay, Emmanuel Wallerstein, okay, so these the geographical thinkers also will come, so that helped. More the political science, PSI is one of the reasons. Okay, 
so that helps a lot okay so ethics paper it will give an edge and uh, uh, interview psr means you know they will be asking questions from international relation 15 minutes will go in that itself okay lucky if you are and if you are so much good in that okay your interview score will also will be higher the time that the interview in which i scored 194 at that time around 10 minutes they went around international relation but that time my preference also was indian foreign service so they went on those lines on international relation analysis like that code well okay so the time when i scored less in <laughs> they screwed my draft okay the education academics provider <laughs> okay i mean okay that's the different story the point is being in psr option and of course if you are putting psr option anybody sorry sorry ifs is not anybody wants to choose ifs first preference or second one first one oh good okay so your interviews will be completely that current affairs with the theory you will can shine in interview it's going to help you a lot ifs and psr is a very good combo good very good okay so uh, this is about uh, the overlapping how exactly to differentiate i will tell you in class as well as i will give you questions in this area when you write answers i will tell you how to write it uh, uh, for political science paper at the same time i will tell how to manage it when it comes to gs also okay that so next is the second one it is relevant for your service also uh, see whatever we learn we should, it should not be for the examination section primarily it's for marks yes of course let be realistic let's be realistic it's for marks but apart from marks it helps you to perform your service so most of your first preference is indian foreign service it is going to uh, make you well equipped well prepared for the task that you are going to take ahead okay that's good very good then uh, it is complemented by newspaper reading for other options they can use their newspaper reading only gs paper you can use it in political science paper also today morning i was referring to happy man jacob his article today's article on uh, ukraine crisis you can use when you talk about eurocentrism uh, or hegemony concept of hegemony uh, the concept of cold war okay or uh, yeah us domination done you can use these keywords today and you can use happy jacobin uh, happy mon jacob in the paper you can use it okay so uh, uh, swasni haider okay or uh, brahma chalani uh, well known person from here you know shashi tarur or tp srinivasan sir existing politicians don't touch Shashi Tharoor is from Congress student, but T.P. Srinivasan said his lectures. You can quote from that. Diversify, okay. Don't reflect that you are from Kerala, okay. So diversify. That's around uh, India. I'll tell you what uh, resources. There are many uh, online resources from where you can find the names of these people. And there is a book, uh, an Oxford uh, publication called as Politics in India. where you have all the leading political scientists written a compilation on indian politics current indian politics i will give you our names and their area of specialization so you can use their appropriately okay that is what subhra and then ma'am is doing okay you, those who are writing the answers not office they really don't know entirely what zoya has and has said or andre patel said okay but they know what where, which area they have dealt with easily they'll put their names i'll teach all these techniques both in class as pleasant well test discussions okay next it is stable what do you mean by stable it does not pull your legs like some other options i don't want to name the options certain options do pull the legs uh, that is you know one year it will be boom one year it will be uh, you would have listened from seniors but political science have you heard so far that it has pulled the legs of anybody because the subject is comprehensive tells in gs ethics in interview so even if you lose you lose lose with grace okay that is uh, not so badly okay and political science will be a stable okay relatively stable once again relatively stable okay fine then yeah these are the myths three myths okay this is three defined answer i have not completed this third point first is vastness second is 17 thinkers are there and no predefined answers these are the three myths So first one, what is vastness? Seeing the syllabus, seventeen thinkers are there, uh, lot of theories. 
okay and uh, you know compared to any other syllabus it appears to be lengthy but this is the shortest considering it is overlapping with gs and uh, thinkers we say 17 only around eight thinkers quite elaborate and i'll simplify them for you you know what happens is in other books and all when you read you take plato he is a social philosopher moral philosopher ethical philosopher as well as political philosopher you need not be reading other uh, aspects philosophy part psychology part social part and all you read only political part polity what he said aristotle polity what he said karl marx is a both social revolutionist philosopher as well as political thinker you read the political thinking part of okay so whenever i say karl marx jishu jishu will be very concentrated on me whether i criticizing marx or not okay okay so uh, exactly political part alone mill a philosopher uh, that is why you know hegel bentham and all is not in our syllabus because they are mainly philosophers immanuel kant is a philosopher they will be in philosophy options not in here okay so political part alone if you just study the political part alone of these eight major thinkers then it is easy in indian thinkers no except for kautilya and dharma shastra all other things are very very small easy to understand just five five points you can get a overall picture about the thinker and i'll even for western thinkers i'll give you five points and link those five points give flow chart for remembrance easily you will be doing it okay fine so for example uh, yeah we have notes you know i have prepared notes in which you will have subra ranjan notes what is there plus unique points additional value addition is done okay so you can stick to my notes itself and uh, i am updating the bilateral relation for you after the class i'll be issuing bilateral relation alone an updated version so that part alone you can study you know, or i'll try to make a book like this itself okay uh, yeah yeah i'll just show the flow charts one or two examples so if you want to know about my notes i i think you can ask to jishnu jishnu you can tell them you have, he has read the notes okay and i have rectified small small mistakes and errors which was there in this version the first version now and the second version is out see so the gautilya's mandala theory you know see i have this through a diagram i have given okay diagram i have given that is there in online also we we'll come to plato see gandhi one flow chart entire concept of gandhi is explained if you remember this with photographic memory whatever questions asked in gandhi you can write with perfect uh, you know arrow marks to tell which leads to what and uh, people say this arabindo is the most complex thing to understand arabindo of indian thought one flow chart where you will be able to understand it completely i'll explain it in the class okay and it, it is in the book it is in a, the notes itself you can do, do it the plato entire concept of plato and 1 2 3 4 5 points with a flow chart okay i'll i'll tell you with the flow how one leads to other and the entire concept so whatever questions they are asking with this flow chart you can able to answer one memory okay so i can we keep on showing for all the thinkers want of time i'm not doing it every thinker there will be a flow chart and we we'll, i'll start like this actually historical background of the thinker to understand what political milieu they come from so that you can understand what really they are speaking okay then main theme in five points pictorial representation flow chart five points or maximum six or seven points okay with that you know that seven points you memorize complete idea you will have and that five points is the key words which you have to mention in the answer paper for example plato common good you have to mention philosopher king you have to mention Ar- aristotle golden mean you have to mention karl marx dialectic materialism dictatorship of proletariat you have to mention js mean you know uh, you have to this qualitative pleasure quantitative pleasure you have to mention okay representative democracy you have to mention okay and uh, Uh, you know uh, uh, there are certain quotes okay famous quotes and w- one one more thing every thinker is there in your syllabus because they have contributed to one particular thought which has resulted in present political system what is their main contribution you will see they would have contributed many thing they would have talked about many thing for example ta- 
Plato talks about republicanism. It is not there in syllabus. Plato's philosophy king is whatever syllabus part. Likewise, Machiavelli has talked about republicanism as well as a, a dictator king. Dictatorship alone is there. Okay, so what is their major contribution? That area. So you can always stick to that point when the question is asked, because they are not going to go out of the syllabus. So that I'll tell you. Famous quotes we'll be talking about. So what is their contribution to Indian Constitution? Application part. In conclusions and all, no. You can write, you know, his particular thought on liberty of J.S. Mill is there. In T. H. Green, Lasky is there. In our thing, Gandhi and thought of Panchayati Raj is there. Ambedkar's representative democracy, uh, uh, effective opposition is there. Embedded in Indian democracy, uh, Indian Constitution, like that, you know, we can mention. Then we will be talking about how it is applied in current affairs. Okay, the uh, monarchy of uh, Saudi Arabia. Okay, or the religious system okay of iran okay or uh, you know what is there in thailand constitutional monarchy okay denmark so all these things we will be studying okay practical application so i will provoke you to think and create your own examples i will encourage your own examples but i will give you the lead okay by current affairs reference okay what is there in current affairs with that i will refer then major criticism uh of the thinker who and all criticism general and specific criticisms will be there this is the part very important when they ask the question comment in paper 1 they will be asked going to ask comment on aristotle's theory of slavery like that they are asked first you have to tell what other thinkers have said major criticism and then you have to give your point if you merely write them not useful at the same time you will write like gs just your point they will think that you have not read political science so when you read every thinker you have to read who are the people who have criticized them what is the main crux of their criticism that also you must be knowing then we will be talking about previous question i will give a model question and discuss okay maybe we'll have a practical exercise in class itself and make you write and then we will discuss how to structure it i'll teach you then saturday sunday whatever we are teaching friday there will be test If you are morning batch, you will be writing in afternoon. Afternoon batch, you have to write the test in the morning. When I come here Saturday morning, there will be session. Afternoon, there will be paper correction. We completed by Saturday itself. We will we will schedule. If uh, many people are joining Saturday Sunday, both day corrections will be there, so we can accommodate all and uh, correct your papers then and there, so that you are prepared for the next test next Friday. Okay, so there will be weekly test and offline correction. Okay. then uh, these things and all will be explained how to handle comment question evaluate question enumerate question illustration question analysis okay uh, evaluate critically evaluate critically examine okay all these points general studies they will in political science in depth i'll give you the analysis so that will be helpful not only for political science option you will be able to handle it for gs paper also okay fine yes you can use it you can use it that is the uniqueness you are going to show from subra range and madam students they do they won't go give the four charts okay that is how you, you are going to give unique and the criticisms i have given criticisms what she has given as well as this. i have gone through her notes also and i'm doing it okay so you are will be your your answers will be fresh as well as comprehensive see in competition in the name of being individual in the name of being uh, competitive you should not write what others are not writing you should write what others are writing as well as extra that is my idea okay so i wish with the notes when i give don't share it in the market until you clear after that you do okay it's better you don't do after that also because my livelihood is that <laughs> anyway at least for your self interest sake like markelly says okay until you clear don't share the notes outside okay then as all the topics are writing you know i took the subra and the notes from the market i didn't pay only i only went and thanked her after getting the result like that and be there anyway that's a different story i am not bothering about that my point is here you will have all the points that subra and then is having there are some points which is irrelevant in their notes i've called called them out okay which is not appropriate which is least priority and i've given more substantial keep that in mind okay then 
you can entirely rely on my notes don't worry okay then uh, yeah uh, we have to come here yeah. okay no predefined answers is there no there is pre i told you 60% in political science questions are repeating only with a different phrase question 40% only you have to manage so please understand please understand you can have predefined introductions and conclusions based on the phrase of the question wording of the question you can change the body okay political science is that easy okay the traditional part and all only the the international dynamics no based on current affairs you done so that when you practice more and more questions you will get trained how to handle them there also there is a structure which i'll teach you there are various types of structure that you can apply in that order you can give the answer wherein your answers will be unique compared to others okay fine next uh, yeah yeah this i discussed the content how it will be uh, parts of the syllabus also i have explained okay then uh, overlapping topics i have explained short book okay i believe in transparency from where i have taken these notes okay this is the list of books if you want you can copy i suggest buy them read them after you get the service are you listening read them after getting service now if you read you will take 2 3 years okay and then and uh, and there will be opening for you in shankarai academy for teaching career if you want that read all these things if you want service read only the material that has been issued and for your uh, information subhran and ma'am also take notes from here only points are here and uh, if at all you are curious sir uh, i'm going to, some people will be there sir i am in college only i want to study these books take the book and come to me i'll mark and give you the selected topics where syllabus is matching read that first then you go for other thing only for those who are in college but if you are going to give in 2023 your prelims please stick with the notes let it be okay have you copied this shall i go for the next slide vipin chandra for uh, history i will this started these that is followed no yeah of course that just i want to tell you this is the source books for the material that uh, flow charts map and you know uh, 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 drafting of introduction and co conclusion is mine that's my mind application of my mind otherwise the source are this uh, concising culling out un unwanted information uh, shaping it according to the syllabus and all is my work so this i explain to you uh, this copy no class approach uh, so review through lecture and entire lecture will be given then previous question we will see okay and then i'll ask you to read and read it certain key words you have to self recite like each thinker five points and you know self recite means keep telling and test will be there test feedback will be there so this i call pqrst method okay this is the best way of learning pqrst pre is preview you should have a preview overall idea you will get uh, that will happen after lecture ask questions see previous year question before reading check the previous year question then you go for read then you will call out unwanted investment and you will take only what is required concentrate on those areas which is must then it is always good no after reading close your eyes and recite okay plato is talking about uh, point 1 communism of rights and property he is talking about education in that three types of education he is talking about uh, in each stage this is the type of education in primary stage in secondary stage in higher stage and then this is the age one has to retire then these two as defined in order to ensure that the uh, uh, philosopher king is created why the philosopher king is created because he has to create a common good a good society the five points flow chart i just close my eyes thought about the flow chart i am explaining to you okay self recite and then take the test that is conducted test feedback that uh, chapter is over got it okay then uh, some online sources is uh, you know observer research foundation you can make note orf observer research foundation indian council for world affairs indian council for world affairs
okay indian defense studies and analysis indian defense studies and analysis idsa website and then you have i am noting down yeah. then uh, you will also uh, you know uh, this all india radio you know news analysis will be there every day one one day on economy one day on uh, society one day on uh, disaster management one day on international relations is good okay 9 o'clock in the night all india radio fm gold and uh, rajya sabha tv they suggest but i would suggest if you read newspapers these things are not required uh, the tv aspect of tv i suggest you to do this for other people hindu alone is fine but for us you need to read hindu as well as indian express editorials of international relations and polity matters related to polity two different opinions so you get a neutral idea okay i don't i am not asking to read entire indian express take indian express see their topics if the topic is related about polity or international relations read okay because radha mohan and all you know he writes in indian express only got it who, who their names also you can so many of the good people from hindu on international relations have jumped to indian express so there you have to do it okay fine any doubts this one there is one one point bilateral relation first doubts any doubts till now any doubts clear okay how to study bilateral relation how we are going to approach bilateral relation this is how we are going to do okay this is approach we will you, you can take note in class now listen first timeline okay you, you must know the history not for writing the examination but to give a correct perspective okay so is this undeniable part okay you cannot directly jump in general studies bilateral class directly the issues will be talked we have to go for a historical background that for time saving we will go for a timeline like this one example is for india china starting how ancient silk route and the recognition of people's republic of china till recent galwan valley 2020 what is the issue i'll update this slide okay when we come to class 2023 2021 what it would recent uh, visit uh, between you know our foreign minister and foreign minister of china and the recent engagements and disengagements conflicts in the international arena seo today's news iran and uh, belarus has joined what what is the implication of seo in india china relation those things all updated thing we will be discussing in, with the time okay the next is uh, the historical background points of uh, convergence which means where india and china is hand in hand agreeing bilaterally regional level like seo organization okay and in the global level like climate change divergence where we divergence border issue trade imbalance okay at the bilateral level regional level china support to pakistan okay china's uh, string of pl scary and uh, china you know china, south china issue in the regional level where it is trying to dominate the, that south china sea that is why we are into quad okay so now internationally what is the conflict internationally quad is a conflict uh, china always you know opposing our permanent seat in united nations whatever resolutions we are initiating they are denying they are not allowing us to take membership in nsg important organizations okay they are countering india in whatever possible ways they can in order to reduce our power okay and our influence in the world okay so these are the i'll i'll elaborate it in detail don't worry so here uh, gs class will be gs oriented here i will explain the bilateral relation like the policy with uh, bhutan is idealistic foreign policy the policy with china is a kind of mix of both realistic and idealistic uh, the policy that we carry out with european union is economic diplomacy okay we have a term for each what kind of uh, uh, thing we have okay so that i'll be doing in the class okay then uh, we'll be talking about potential areas of cooperation for in developing the growth for example between india and uh, china uh, pharmaceuticals indian pharmaceuticals products if they are low trade balance can be balanced that is a potential area it information technology we are good in 
and uh, leverages me the difference between cooperation leverage is political leverage dalai lama is a leverage for us okay every time china creates a problem we will be supporting the tibetan cause okay like that what is the leverage that we have to counter china in fact china has more leverages over us geographically politically internationally economically and all so leverages means we can use a particular uh, phenomenon for our advantage that is called as leverages with each country we have a leverage so we will be studying that also which will can be included in the conclusions so you like know these can be used to tackle china and influence them in order to take decisions according to our interest like that we can write okay then finally suggestions any suggestions to improve uh, apart from this you know potential areas and leverages how we should carry out the future like that if any suggestion is there that also we will be saying okay yeah yeah you have to see which one is uh, the underlying thing whether our cooperation or a small small conflict overall we are agreeing with the uh, principle of common but differentiated responsibility within that uh, you know the voluntary and uh, legally binding uh, those things we are differing so that is what you are going to explain in the paragraph you will start that point of convergence is climate change the examiner is curious he reads that underline these two words voluntary uh, reductions and legally binding emission so they will look into and find that you know we, under overall agreement still there is a point of divide that that is a in terms of degree only we can talk in political sense as i said this is for structuring the answer making it easier for the examiner to evaluate uh, for that matter they may be asking question only the divergence point 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 of irritance or point of convergence or possible points of cooperation like that but when we prepare notes take class and you study in that manner you can handle any type of question so this is mainly for how we go for an approach to study bilateral relation answer writing will be practiced by giving specific questions any doubts this yeah see political science it includes theory of what is equality what is liberty as defined by various schools but polity will have equality liberty and the meaning will be given by the respective country so indian polity we are mentioning which means what is equality according to india what is secularism according to india that will only will study but in political science elaborately you will be seeing multiple dimensions multiple forms multiple thinkers who have talked about that concept and how it evolved okay a wide elaborate thing so we can say that it is the theory behind uh, the concepts but with respect to polity federalism in india is different from federalism followed in different countries it is not same everywhere okay so polities are specific to countries whereas political science is talking about everything the theory behind it evolution and comparative politics will talk about how things are unfolding uh, practically in each one of the countries and what is the structural reasons and social reasons for that structural means the law uh, the policies and other things social reason means caste system class system or uh, inequal uh, uh, inequality regimes structural inequalities okay those things uh, will be studied in political science as i told you know the first five questions comment part okay it is asking you to comment feminist critic of state okay so i'll tell in short what, what is feminism feminism talks about that males are dominating the women they are not uh, giving equal position there is an inequal and how to restore them that is feminist thought what is the feminist criticism of state is state is masculine which means most of the leaders are male only okay and uh, they decide policies according to their uh, uh, you know psychology as well as Uh, needs they do not consider women in the uh, decision making process like recently boris johnson told, told no if vladimir putin has been a woman he would not have aggrandized ukraine it's a feminist thought on state now you have to comment on that okay you have to comment on that so first you have to write what is the criticism of feminist thinkers on state they say it is patriarchal state is not including women state policies whatever points i said first give it okay so you have to include the thinkers name oh, there are three different types of feminist thinkers one is uh, you know liberal thinkers liberal feminists radical feminists 
social feminist. Okay, Shula Smith Firestone is one thinker who is a radical feminist. Okay, liberal uh, Wolfsbone Craft. Okay, and uh, 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 Taylor, Harriet Taylor, a friend of J. J. S. Mill. She is uh, one of the first feminists. They are talking about liberal feminism. So liberal feminists, you know, they say we want equal voting rights. You are not giving equal voting rights. You are not giving access to political positions. Whereas radical feminists are saying, you know, the state should interfere in the personal lives of individuals because personal is political. Uh, state is uh, saying that personal sphere is different, family is different, public life is different. So government should regulate only public life. This is the traditional thinking. They should not interfere in personal life. What is happening between husband and wife? What is happening between father and son? The state should not regulate. What is happening between a teacher and student should not be either purpose or subject matter of state. That is the traditional thinking. Whereas radical feminists will come and say, no, this is not right. You have to consider domestic violence, dowry system. You have to consider the unequal position of women in uh, home. Uh, in property, there is no equality. Economic independence is not there. Because of that only, women is not equal in the political sphere. So to address that, you have to address the personal sphere. Liberal thinkers will not say that. Liberal things will not come to personal sphere. So radical feminists criti will criticize state. So that point you have to mention. Socialists, they will say that why women do domination is there? Because property is there. Why property is there? Uh, or how property is related to uh, women domination? I'll tell you in short. Okay. Uh, Frederick Engels in his uh, How Property is Evolved. Frederick Engels is friend of Marx, okay, on property when he is writing. Earlier, there was no property. How come land is a property? Have you ever thought how land becomes a property? Now, if you want to be a owner of land, how will you own it? Paying paisa, how you own, uh, earn paisa? Applying labor, right? So when you only when you apply labor, something can be your property. How come land be a property? Land is a creation of nature. Suddenly one person going and sitting and marking a territory, telling this, this is my land. And later on, you know, when he's transferring land, you'll get money and transfer it. That is how this land property system, Zamindari system. Whether uh, Zamindari originally owned the land, but he said that this area you collect tax. Later on, they become the landowners. Okay, this is how historically uh, Karl Marx will beautifully put the greatest ever blunder that man has done is to make land as a property. I teach, apply my labor and get, earn money. That is my labor. Of course, it's my property. I buy something, fine. But land, firstly, not now. In the first stage, how it became a property? That is a big thing. Yeah, fine. Now, what happens is women will stay at home, right? Men will go for hunting and gather the uh, fruits, hunting animals and all, food will be gathered. After eating, surplus will be there. Now, the surplus thing and land, if this man dies, who will be owning it? Logically, who? Son or daughter. How will you identify a particular person or particular child is the son and daughter of a, this particular person? How? By controlling the sex of women, while allowing men to have multiple relationships or you know go for other things and domination, while women are uh, women and their sex is controlled, this, this is what social feminists will say. Okay, so so they will say abolish private property. So there is no question to whom property has to be transferred. Then what is the need for domination of women? What is the domination for controlling the sex of women? Simple. You are understanding the biology, you know. I am telling it in a very broad sense. Okay, if you think by controlling men's sex, you cannot determine whose daughter and son is, but by controlling women's sex, you can determine the lineage. That is why even the Nair society of uh, uh, Kerala is matrilineal, property is transferred matrilineally, but still it's patriarchal. Okay, because control is with the Uncles, right? You guys know about it. Okay, even the matrilineal societies of Kerala and Meghalaya are also patriarchal. Okay, that is because this is this perspective is given by social perspective. Once again, come on, the points I'm telling from this stage is not my point, it is the points of that particular perspective. So that is why I'm telling you this perspective. So you have to write these three perspectives in short, two, two lines. 
and then you have to give your opinion you have to comment on it you can say that liberal feminists no their critic is acceptable but the, the critics of uh, the radicals also can be acceptable but what is suggested by social feminists is not practicable that is your comment okay in the words of liberal thinkers like robert nozick milton friedman okay communitarians like michael walser and then your opinion got got it so that is how we have to give the this one so affirmative action once again you have to define affirmative action is any action to uplift the lower section of the society okay and make it on par with the uh, you know average people in the society reducing inequality it can be in any form okay so affirmative action is for you know practice in various forms in various countries in india reservation is there okay so uh, affirmative action is to do away with the historical injustice and to empower the marginalized okay and affirmative action one and all spoken about it th green has spoken about affirmative action ambedkar has spoken about affirmative action okay how it you know is necessary to keep the society bound and then you have to give comments positive comments negative comments some people have criticized liberal thinkers like uh, uh, yeah robert nozzi has said that affirmative action reinforces inequality reservation is the affirmative action okay some critics say no reservation reinforces caste like that liberal thinkers will say okay feminists and dalits okay will say that affirmative action is concentrated on other sections of the not society other sections of the society not the uh, limb or, or we say that very marginalized sections those who are in the outer circle of the society they are not concentrated like the nomadic nomadic tribes and other things and all no they then uh, the supporters are affirmative action and your opinion finally in the conclusion uh, with current examples like how it has helped in usa india malaysia and various countries you have to mention see since it's a class i am taking an uh, you know open space to discuss in elaborately you have to be concise okay 3 is the magic number okay so three points two to two lines of what is feminist critic uh, maximum three thinkers or just one criticism for each thinker and your conclusion finish so here you have scope of giving three different uh, perspectives automatically for each one if only one perspective is there in that one perspective give two thinkers name and give your comment sometimes you may not have thinkers name don't worry some of the topers say thinkers name must be there don't worry it is not like that you have to address the demand of the question every answer need not have the thinkers name but theory part thinkers a criticism of thinkers questions like this and all should have thinkers name the first time when i scored 335 out of 600 in political science same question they asked i did not write any thinkers name i didn't even mention the names which i mentioned now but personal political personal i have referred to those names okay because it's absolute theory but the affirmative action is a practical methodology governments is applying for upliftment so they are thinkers may give may not give not an issue but first question you have to give in in political science you have the freedom to answer so that is why first you give this side opinion that side opinion take your side that will tell that you have read political science well and you are able to have an opinion the subject demands opinion but informed opinion the key word informed what is that informed opinion you have read all the thinkers perspective all the ideologies perspective on that particular uh, dimension and then you have decided upon the final thing see this first day there are questions i will show you can there be universal consumption of human rights okay uh, when i have to explain human rights i have to explain the concept of psychic unity then universalization of uh, morality and relative morality cultural relativism of morality and then only i can explain this question so as of now i think uh, questions if you want i'll discuss not a problem all the questions i'll discuss simple agreed simple once you read the entire syllabus complete the test series political science is going to be kick off because you it will interlinked you know so you apply your mind you can rotate the answers okay terms will be difficult initially after explanation in the class 
okay with the very relevant example you will be able to understand and replicate that in the exam first instance political science paper sociology will appear complex once you understand it's most easiest thing okay because it's it offers dynamism so this one is a direct questions gauss theory of justice only thing is you should know the historical background in which he spoke about justice and then if you write that connect answer is over rephrasing of question do justice to the question otherwise just writing what is rawls theory of justice is irrelevant answer but before rawls the theory of justice was elitist and uh, plural uh, sorry uh, it, it was elitist and uh, it was more support for capitalist whereas john rawls tried to include liberal thought socialist thought and communitarian thought that is improvisation he made it's very interesting and let's travel together you know it will be a very fantastic journey uh your uh, perspectives will become wider the way you look at things will become different you will be both critical as well as appreciative of anything which you see okay that is what uh, political science political science like plato say will kindle your inherent abilities which usually social uh, that is humanities do and even science uh, do in their respective way but in human perspective in perspectives in narratives ideologies in these areas no they provoke you and uh, make you think in different perspective classes we are planning for 4 hours 9 to 1 okay so with a short break in between in saturdays and sundays okay so we will be having around eight classes in a month so we will be trying to complete it four to five months okay if need be extra classes will be there in the afternoons provided it is not clashing with any of your tests see for the 120 120 to 140 hours classes okay because political science sometimes you know like you have asked the question certain concepts you will be very critical Uh, the plan time will expand he knows jishnu knows what will happen in bangalore okay that uh, sometimes even after 1 o'clock we'll be having a discussion extra 15 minutes half an hour just to satisfy your intellectual curiosity and i'll tell you also which is will come in exam which will not what to write what to avoid so that both your intellectual curiosity is satisfied and what the need of the examination is also satisfied when i give notes you want dictation maybe i you i may you will be using ppt wherever you want i have this flow chart and all i so you redo the same you do the exercise things gets inculcated and then you can directly read it and some key points keywords you no know, i'll say write it in note write this point i'll give time for you that you can write okay sometimes i may give a current affairs example or current affairs quote something is even recently okay so at that time you know i will give you time and ask you to note you can do the value addition you want to dictate that will take a lot of time it'll take a lot of time and also when we have a printed thing i think it is not required right ppts you know like you can compare the points and then it is a note making of what is there in text that you can do In fact, I am easy with uh, without PPTs because most of the time, I have told you put the PPT. People will be busy copying it; they will not listen to me. Then they will say, "Sir, what is that? Where is the connect?" So let me see. I I, I just want to experiment with you. One or two classes, I'll try one with PPT, one without it, and see how you are responding. Okay, based on that, I'll take this. Okay, we'll wind up. Yeah. Okay. So uh, with regarding to start date of the class, they said August eighteenth. Sorry, August fourteenth. What day is August fourteenth? Yes. Then we'll start by twelfth. Is your thirteenth? Uh, thirteenth, we can start. Thirteenth or fourteenth? Okay, I'll confirm the date. Okay, uh, that is because the second batch is also coming. You are in August batch or June? June batch. You? June. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, I'll write my mail ID. Okay. What you can do is complete the four entities. This one month. Political science, eleventh standard, twelfth standard NCERT. All the NCERT is, you know, it is better. It gives you a strong foundation. Maybe Friday, that is before August, we can have a test on political science NCERT questions. So 
11th standard 12th standard ncrt 11th standard ncrt constitution at work read that okay do this and come in you know, political theory yeah, i should be teaching something else so now do this constitution at work read and come um politics in india since independence read it then 9th and 10th democratic politics of india 1 democratic politics 2 okay then 6 to 8 since political science option no let us not leave any stone unturned so 6th 7th 8th 9th 10th 11th 12th you can read those ncrt's political theory and contemporary world politics after the class is beginning okay because conceptual ideas okay you should not get frustrated with the subject so this one will be better okay do you want to reiterate the book names you want me to yeah ncrt's but 11th political theory introduction to political theory hold it for now contemporary world politics hold it for now other ncrt's you read once again i'll tell you an introduction to political theory and contemporary world politics hold it for now again we are going to do it after the class begins before that all other ncrt's read read it in reverse manner read it in reverse manner which means 12th 11th 10th 9th 8th 7th 6th why i am saying is you can be very productive you can uh, complete it in a shorter time because you learn the higher concept then go for a smaller concept you just fine tune it and fastly you can complete instead of or otherwise sixth book you will take 3 days seventh another 4 days eighth another 4 days ninth like that but if you go from the reverse first book 11th and 12th you may take 8 uh, days 8 days and another 4 days 10th to 6th finish so in 20 days time period you can complete this okay we will have another 10 days for buffer okay uh, so to ensure whether you are studying or not before the first class itself we will have test it will be very simple nature no complex question like this very descriptive like that only okay just to check whether you have read the ncrts or not okay fine so this is just because you know we are starting the option by delayed okay but don't worry within four months that is when we start august uh, half september october november december by december will be complete so today night no after going home once again see the entire syllabus as i told you in the morning session syllabus is the key to orient yourself so aram se go through internalize the syllabus that is very important for the any options otherwise you will be studying something which is not required okay for example citizenship will be interesting in all books okay but citizenship is not there in our chapter sovereignty is not there in political science syllabus okay unnecessarily you will be reading it in other books especially state uh, textbooks don't do that 